Hi, this is Frank and you're watching Die Hard RC Addicts. Uh, today we're going to attempt to put in a flood chamber in my uh, Piranha 600. I've had this boat for quite a while and I do like running it but it does flip over a lot. So I'm hoping that by adding a flood chamber it'll make it a little funner to run this boat for when it gets upside down it should self ride itself. I've never attempted this before so I'm not sure how it's going to work out. Um, I have started on it so let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at and then hopefully by the end of the video we can take the boat out and do a test run. So after uh, doing a lot of searching on the internet, I found that it was necessary to make templates first to try and fit the uh, flood chamber inside the boat. And there was no really clear instructions anywhere that I could find on how to do it the right way. So it's basically a uh, trial and error. And I found that it was easiest to try and uh, make two piece templates like the front half and the back half um, just because it's a little bit difficult to get into the boat. Um, originally I was going to run the flood chamber all the way to the very front like most people do but it was since it's such a small hole it's very hard to get inside to the front and I was worried about being able to seal it up correctly so instead I made the flood chamber come up to here and then kind of go off at an angle to there so that I could at least reach to the front of it and make sure it gets sealed good I made my flood chamber out of wood and also reinforced it with some fiberglass cloth and uh, glued it in with a 20 minute finishing epoxy. Um, it was quite difficult getting the template fit right um, because it's hard to see inside the front of the boat to get in there to make sure you got a good fit. Um, after I got it all fit up I found out it was easier to see the front if you actually cut the hole in the back of the boat first so you can stick a flashlight in there to see inside. Um, I've already fitted this one and glued it all in and yesterday I actually uh, tested it to make sure it was leak proof. I filled it full of water and none of the water leaked into the hole. So the chamber itself is pretty much done. Um, you can uh, make the chamber out of various different materials. A lot of people will make it out of fiberglass itself but I didn't feel comfortable fabricating straight from fiberglass so I made wood templates first and then uh, glued them in place and then put the fiberglass over it and epoxied it and it seemed like it worked out pretty good. This hole was a little more difficult, I think, than some of the other ones because it has a lot of different contours to it. This is curved here, and then in the back, it's got like this weird little gap back there that you got to try and get into. If you have a straighter hole that doesn't have as many contours, I think it would be a lot easier to put the flood chamber in, and you'd probably be able to even get it to go all the way to the front. So now that I have the flood chamber in there and I tested it, it's time to actually put some vent holes in the hole for the water to come in. So on the top side usually you want to put several holes in here so that when the boat is upside down the water can get into the flood chamber quickly. And basically when the boat is upside down those holes will allow the water to enter and the hole in the back will act as a vent to let it out. I've also seen in some of the things I've looked at on the internet some people will put a small vent hole in the bottom of the hole too to let the air out so that more water can get in. So I may do that but I think I'm going to try it first without the hole in the bottom. I'll just put the holes in the top and I'm still working on the back side of it too. I'm probably going to put another hole up here to allow more water to come out and also to get in when it's upside down and when it takes off because this is the, where all the water is going to come out of after the boat gets moving. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on it a little bit more, get the holes drilled, and then we'll take another close look at it. One last thing before I work on it, um, before you build the flood chamber, you want to find out how much water it needs to hold to flip the boat over. So from what I found, it's best before you tear the boat apart, put everything in it the way you would run it with before the flood chamber is in, seal it up tight, and then you fill up the bathtub or something or a big tub of water and float the boat upside down and then you just add weight to the side that you're going to put the flood chamber on until the boat rolls over. Once you have the correct amount of weight that flips the boat over, weigh that weight on a scale and then you need to get it the same amount of water volume as the weight of whatever the weights were that you had on there. So on mine I ended up, I can't remember how much weight it was, but I it took a complete like drinking bottle of water was about perfect for it. So yesterday when I filled it up, it was actually more than what it required to flip it over. They say usually you want to have about 10% more volume. Um, it took about 
one and a third bottles of water and it originally it only took one bottle to flip it over so hopefully it's enough to make it work right all right so let me go ahead and get to work on the boat and i'll be right back okay here's the finished hole with all the holes drilled in it i decided to go with just a single line of holes down the side here um some of them do vary a little bit in size just because of where they're at um, I've got the boat completely reassembled right now. All the parts are inside it, including the battery. And as you can see, I have it all taped up. And at the moment, I'm uh, filling up the bathtub so we can do a real quick float test to see if it actually works. Um, on the back here, I didn't bother drilling out this top part. Instead, I just made the hole on the bottom bigger. Um, that should help. So the, I think we're about ready to go ahead and do the test. So I'm going to get it upstairs, and we'll see if it actually rolls over on its own. All right, so first I just want to set it in the water and see what the ride attitude would be with it just floating, if it's going to roll over or do anything weird. It does seem to list to that side because it's got water in it now. So let's go ahead and uh, flip it upside down. All right, let's see if this actually works. Keep your fingers crossed. It's filling full of water. Well, it doesn't look like it's rolling over, and I think it's probably because it's got air captured inside the chamber, so I may actually have to do the little vent on the bottom. As you can see, all the holes are under the water right now, so that doesn't allow the air to escape that's inside it. So it's probably going to need a vent on the bottom side here to get it to actually fill up the rest of the way, so the boat will flip back over like that. All right, so I guess I back downstairs and uh, do the vent hole. All right, we're ready to test it for the second time. Um, I decided to put a series of small pinholes instead of just one hole here uh, to make sure that we can vent the chamber well. So let's go ahead and put it in the water and see if it flips over right side up this time. Oh, there it is. Cool, man. It looks like it works. All right, uh, this video is kind of getting long, so I think we're going to do the test run part in part two. So stay tuned, there'll be a second video coming real soon.